Jeevangus Konisatarshiv, yeah, lads. Um, in you be a me like fake into air and fish on show, let I debo. August, yeah, let's get on to it, lads. So, uh, today we are gonna be watching Thai season three rewards. So, if you guys are not subscribed to Thai, a link to the channel will be in the description. He is obviously seen as arguably the best 2K player in the world. There are probably maybe 10, 15 guys that on any given day can beat anyone, so that's why I will say debatably, but going into 250, he would be probably seen as, as of right now, most people's favorite to win. Again, no one thought, not many people thought Jomar was going to win last year, and he did, so you just never know. When you're talking about these league guys, a lot of them built differently, because obviously there has been turn up and stuff, but... Ties right up there, and in terms of the competitive scene and content creation, he's obviously the biggest. Huge shout out to Ty for making this video because, again, just like with some of my reaction or with my tier list videos that he reacts, we both have two different perspectives on everything in the game. He's obviously looking at it more from a competitive standpoint, what players he can use in games and win for money, whereas I'm looking at it from a standpoint of, look, I know I'm going to beat like 90% of people that I play online. What players are going to help me win games online against players that may not be top 100 players in the world? Because there is a completely different thing you have to look at. Like, for example, someone like a Zach Levine. You will, if you're playing against a bang average player, someone who you're probably going to beat anyway, running a Zach Levine will help you beat that player by more than running a Kobe Bryant. But if you are playing against one of the top 15 players in the world your Zach Levine's going to get eaten alive. Whereas, there's a lot of people, offense means a lot more than defense, but at the top level, bad defensive players are going to be punished. So, obviously two different, completely different perspectives. Whereas, when he's reacting to my tier list, he's looking at it more from a competitive standpoint. And when I'm watching these videos right here, I'm looking at it more from a standpoint of a good player, but not quite a competitive top 100 player in the world level player. So, um, yeah, let's have a look at this right here. And as always, we got our water here. Anytime there is something we disagree with, we take a sip of water. Because, well, I just want to be the opposite of stereotypical Irish, I guess. Three. Now, you guys are going to see guys like Kay. Magic Johnson on here. because it's my, this, has, this answer has to be Magic. I don't like Gobert. Embry's good, but you can't really call him cheesy. If you think about it, Magic Johnson's six foot nine. How many point guards do we have that is that are taller than even like six None. fives? Apologies, I'm 1.5 time in this. Am I? Let me know in the comments. Am I the only person who can't watch a YouTube video anymore at normal speed? Am I the only person? Every video I watch has to be at 1.5, 1.75 time. Two is a bit too fast. 1.25 is a bit too slow. Like I genuinely cannot watch a YouTube video anymore at normal speed. Am I? Is am I crazy or is that a common thing? Like, am I, or have I just been watching too much YouTube over, like, quarantine and stuff and over the years that I just can't watch at normal speed? Let me know in the comments. Am I crazy or is that normal? Six, six. That can do what Magic can do. He's a great defender. Comes basically pretty complete on the defense end. He has an 84. It's Magic. The only thing that really he forced you to change matchups. It's ma the answer is Magic. First thing are his, like, hot spots and really the lack of showtime dunks as well as his dribble style. His dribble style is just something that's I mean, absolutely terrible. And something that I don't know if I'll be able to get over throughout the course of this year. So I mean, the dribble style is not going to affect too much. Now on current gen, he basically walks up the court. But nonetheless, he's still very, very cheesy. He's, he's unbelievable next gen. For his time, Rudy Gobert was very cheesy. I know a lot of people uh, like Tim Duncan. I personally wouldn't say I did. I mean, he's basically he's the same card as Duncan. He's feel in a sense. Taller than Tim Duncan. Very lengthy. I just was never loving his release, but still, nonetheless, a similar guy, obviously, in the flash glitch set that was just an absolute cheese ball. And last but not least, the triple threat free Embry. Wayne Embry. What a card! What a card! But the thing I love about this Wayne Embry is he comes with Hall of Fame showtimes, comes with a ton of showtime dunks. Defensively, you couldn't ask for a better player, has a three ball, and he's in triple threat offline. So, a lot of people did have Wayne Embry, and if you've had Wayne Embry, you know how truly cheesy the card can be. But so, there's really only so one good. right answer to the be, If you said one answer, it's magic. Game out in this season. And I think it's pink you force you to change matchups. If you know how to use this card, he is tough as can stop. I've played some guys that you can't stop him. Very, very you good. actually can't. Especially because I hate switching matchups. If you're running with a 6 3 point guard, he forces your 6 3 point guard onto a wing, and if you've got the right team, it's impossible. You can't guard it. We do have the defensive player of the season. As you guys can see. It's a close it's between one. three guys here. The first guy is a All right. race, I'm giving my opinion because he's more versatile as AK. Because AK can both guard a primary ball handler better than almost anyone in the game. And also, if he gets switched onto a post player, can guard them at an elite level. So I'm going AK for versatility. But I mean, if you're Ty and the way he plays lanes and full court press, Will Chamberlain, and it's not even close. 
Maurice Lucas, I like that he's Maurice Lucas there because he is one of those underrated defenders in the game, but it's one of these two, and it all depends on what you're looking for for a defender. Best perimeter defender in the game, AK, in my opinion. Best interior defender and, like, lane player in the game is Will Chamberlain because of his eight-foot wingspan. So, as long as... As much as I love Maurice Lucas, as long as he doesn't go Maurice Lucas, I'm happy. Yeah. The thing I'd say about Maurice Lucas is he's not talked about enough because of how poor he is on the offensive end. Really, if you compare Maurice Lucas' stats even to Will Chamberlain and Badges, they're... I'm not going to say they're similar. They're similar. They're not equal, but they're very, very similar. Now, the one thing, obviously, Will has is his player model and his size. But the thing about Maurice Lucas is he can play that power forward position. He is a great defense player at power forward position. I actually ran him unbadged in wagers, stuff like that, because of how great he's on the defense. He's so good to be. He is so good to be. Just because that's a lot of MC to apply catch to ratings and all those types of things. But purely on the defensive end. But he's not Will to AK. He's not Will to AK. I'm pretty sure faster, better lateral quick, has better tendencies. I want to say better tendencies and way better badges than Draymond Green. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Draymond is an 86 three ball. I like, hold up, hold up. There's a reason people use Draymond. There's a reason people use Draymond, lads. Hold up. Draymond Green, we all know the kind of animations he got. He's not better than Draymond. He's not overall better than Draymond. He's not far off, but he's not overall better. I need to talk about him. I mean, Will Chamberlain on the defensive end. He's ridiculous. He is ridiculous. Next gen, he's got super speed as well. He's similar to the he's similar to Shaq. Yeah, he's similar. Just as a lot of guys are similar on similar things, but similar doesn't necessarily mean equal. Just because Will has similar. He's he is to Shaq what Derrick Rose is to De'Aaron Fox badged up. Like, depending on how you play, you might notice much of a difference, but objectively, there is a big difference. Like, Shaq to Will Chamberlain is the same gap as badges of De'Aaron Fox to Derrick Rose. Doesn't mean they're equal. Will's defense is far superior than any other player in the game. I guess I just gave it away uh, who the defensive player of the season is going to be. But when I say Will has incredible defense, uh, is he worth locking in? Probably not because he can't really I'll give you that. I'll defense. give you that. I like AK. I'm going to go AK, I but I don't care. You just got to love Will Chamberlain. The last player here is Diamond Andre Kirilenko. Now, as far as a purely like on-ball defender, it's hard to beat this card. Hall of Fame clamps, I believe, has some other badges in it. If you can His I'll length is ridiculous as well. Just trust me when I say he beats people up on the defense. Now, a guy that I did consider putting on here was Pink Diamond Paul George because he beats people up. PG is not as good as AK. He's not as good as AK. And that is why he is my third player, but it's it's no debate run away easily one of my i think it is a debate i was a defense player of the season i think it is a debate all time, galaxy of will chamberlain the next player here or the next subject here is the most overrated he's a like best player wait three so you say wilt is the best player of all time i mean you can, you can argue it i guess the first part we're going to talk about is pink diamond kevin durant and the reason i'm going to say overrated is first of all the card yes over he's 400k now, yes i get he's an idol's lock-in but a lot of people use this card and aren't going to lock in idols. Like people legitimately like this. Embiid is the most overrated of those three. Embiid is barely better than Chris Bosch and is at one stage yeah, or not one stage. Yesterday was ten times more expensive. He is this much better than Bosch. Hakeem is the most overrated. Shaq is the best at what he does. He's not like nobody that doesn't want Shaq for Shaq or for an interior center. Well, he's the second best at what he does after Wilt. KD's still really good. Embiid, Embiid's the most overrated. George, don't ask me why, because I don't have the answer for it. Because the thing about it is, current gen, next gen, it doesn't matter. His release is okay. He's so nice next gen. He's so, KD's so nice next gen. I mean, it's, it's okay. KD's by a mile the best of those three players. Larry Bird, you just can't. And, and it's just like, the thing of the matter is, if his name wasn't Kevin Durant, nobody would be talking about that card anymore. That's just all I really have to say about it. Is he bad? I, no. I mean, overrated? Yes. The next card we if his name wasn't Kevin Durant, he'd be 80 KMT, and he'd be DBG's favorite budget favorite mid-tier card in the game let's let's be call a spade a spade he's spectacular he's 400k and not 90k if his name's kevin durant but he's still very good diamond is shaquille o'neal another card that i personally just don't like you see a lot of next gen he's a god next gen shaq's a god similar to katie his name wasn't shaquille o'neal people wouldn't run it no next gen he's a super speed howard does he's not that much he's a super speed on next gen he's bare but he's barely more expensive than dwight you can't make that argument he's this like he's literally what's shaq like 210, 215k. I sold my Dwight for one like 70k. So I got 30k difference, and I think Shaq's 30k better than Dwight. Uh, if, if they just were swapped, it's swapped. And Shaq's a super speed next gen. It's just like the name brands on these two players is why I think they're overrated. Because I, I disagree. Like one. Last one is Pink Diamond Joel Embiid. When people come in my chat saying, Todd, do you think Joel Embiid is the best center in the game? No, absolutely not. He's not better than Bosch. Bosch is good. Quite honestly, I don't even think he's better than Chris Bosch, okay? That's my personal opinion. And so for the MT that each one of these guys goes for, it has, has to be Embiid. It has to, has to be Embiid. Joel Embiid. Not even for Will Chamberlain, just to run it center. And he goes for 200, 300, 400,000 MT. It's just absolutely wild. Too. Has to be the Embiid. The most overrated player, in my opinion, is Pink Kevin. Right I'm kind of biased. I mean, he's overpriced yes but he's quality come on he's on he's a similar level to a pink diamond paul george come on come on ty come on you're making an irish person drink water 
You know it's bad when that's happening. Because he is the straight arm king. But if we do get a galaxy up with KD with a release on quick, I repeat, a release on quick is very, very important. Then KD. Yeah, but his release is fine and normal. After overrated, we do have the most underrated player that came out this season. Now, each of I think that the most underrated player is Clyde because everybody knows how good these two cards are. But Clyde, but at the same time, you need to put clamps on Clyde. There are definitely other players that I would put on this list. Um, Glenn wasn't this season. I think Glenn was underrated last season. I'm trying to think who's good. Chris Bosch. Chris Bosch. Chris Bosch belongs on this list more than any of these guys. So every budget, every budget squad has Chris Paul and Sean Kemp in it. One of these Chris Bosch is the most underrated. What they should be going for. Let's start with my investment of the season, Sean Kemp. So if you watch my No Money Spent Squad series, you know that I invested in a lot of Amethyst. Sean I mean, there's just so five, many of them. And at one point this it's season, supply and demand. Camp. That's the only problem with Kemp. I came in my stream the other day saying he invested in 31 Sean Kemp. You guys do the math. You buy him for four or five k. You sell each for nine or ten k. That take four thousand. He's quality. He's he's brilliant. He's fantastic. So, but he's not underrated. Underrated player. We all know how good he is. So, basically, when I say Sean Kemp's underrated, I mean I run him on my No Money Spent account and have some good success with the card. I really, really do. I think he's a very, very solid player. Uh, can stretch the floor. Has Hall of Fame showtime and just does some things at a very, very high level. The next card is Amethyst CP3, especially on next gen. It's hard to beat any card in the game for his price. Like next gen specific, you don't have to apply any bad. This is a weird one because I'm the opposite. I'm the opposite. I think Chris Paul is way better on current gen than next gen. I don't like him that much on next gen. I really don't. I find his his uh, leaner very, very awkward, and his inability to dunk. Like I prefer Pink Diamond Iverson over Chris Paul on next gen, but. You can kind of see it. I don't... Like, I'm very much on the... Chris Paul is a god on current gen and only pretty decent on next gen. So it's weird that our opinions are literally flipped like... He likes him on next, I like him on current. Like that. CP3 is going to get the job done. He's basically an off-brand Steph Curry. When I say off-brand, no, I mean very, very off-brand. But they give you this kind of same thing. So you're just going to go... Nah, he's screen. like a... And I've had a lot of success with that Amazon Amethyst CP3. He's more of a badged-up Steve Nash than an off-brand Steph Curry. Uh, card on my no money spent account. Now, the last card that I'm going to talk about is Clyde Drexler. Now, you have to apply some badges to Clyde for him to be a competitive type level player, but I don't think he's far off an Eddie Jones type of card. Like, what he can give you is in. But that, you have to apply 100k to bad, 100k worth of badges to make him that, though. By that logic, the Iron Fox belongs in here. But badge up Clyde, though, is fantastic. He is fantastic. He's just so expensive yeah, to badge like him up. Release, first of all. And that's a big thing to know. And I like his I like his versatility. He can attack the rim. He's got he's pretty lengthy. I think he's six foot seven. Badge wise, he's not bad. Like I said, you need to apply some, a few badges. But if you do that, I think Clyde Drexler is a very, very underrated card in the game. But easily taking the easily taking the cake. On next gen specifically, Chris Paul is so so underrated. And I I mean you play him every game. I say underrated, people know about Chris Paul, but they don't know about Chris Paul. Like DVG was the first one to, to really put me on this card, and DVG was right. I play award, him like every game. Over is the token award now. This one's if there's any other answer other than Maurice Lucas, although Hal Greer is not that bad. If there's any other answer than Maurice Lucas, um, I will fly. If he says anyone but Lucas, I will fly to Iowa and personally complain to Ty about this list. I don't think he's useful. You look at Hal Greer. I mean, people have used Hal against Hal's him. okay. Again, I don't really think he's useful. He needs to be bad it's, it's getting harder and harder. Hopefully, next season, we have a better token rewards, like a couple pink diamonds, a couple diamonds. Something I can actually compare it to because here's really the only one I really used was Maurice Lucas. And I used Maurice Lucas is while, really so good. By far away, he is the most, he's most deserving. That's not even close. Award for their specific tier in NBA 2K21 because neither Hal Greer or Hersey Hawkins really even deserves to be talked about, quite honestly. The next one is the budget MVP. Chris I might make the uh, debate that Jonathan Isaac deserves to be on here, and you guys might be right. Like, it's hard between him and Spicy B because both of them are very. It's very preference. It's preference. It's Chris, Chris, it's Chris Paul. Paul. Like, there's a no. Just a little bit too much. There's so, a no brainer. The first guy we're going to talk about is Spicy B. Ever since last year, I've just fell in love with Pascal Siakam. Ooh, I'm, I might change to Sean Kemp because there are a lot of good, like, 30, 40k point guys there. Actually, no, Bosch exists. So, yeah, it's going to be Chris yeah. Paul. If we get an Opal Spice P pre 250k, maybe even a Pink Diamond Spice P, he might be on my 250k. Spice P's class so as well. Like we do got Sean Kemp as well, and it's kind of hard because we've already done the most underrated cards. So, Sean Kemp, you guys know me. I love Sean Kemp. And then we got him with this CB3. I've talked about Sean Kemp and CB3 already. You guys know my thoughts. I use both of my main squad. The MVP is concerned. Same guy. I, 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 yeah, I, yeah, I'll yeah, give you that. Sean Kemp right choice. In the underrated and not the budget MVP. So, CP3 taking the cake once again. Sean Kemp is a close, close second on both of these rewards. The next is the Mr. Inconsistent Award. So, we got three guys. He, Ty hates Paul George. I just want to say that I would have, I think it's blasphemy to have Paul George because I think Paul George is one of the easiest releases in the game to green. Paul George, Cam Reddish, they are two of my favorite cards in the game. But Ty has hated Paul George since 2K9, since 2K20. I think, I don't know, I think Diamond Paul George or something sold him in a game before. And uh, since then, he's had some vendetta against Paul George in 2K. But um, it's, it's Kevin Durant. Hey guys here, Paul George, Katie, and Rudy Gobert. So here's the thing. 
with Paul George being diamond, it's it's pretty tough. He is similar to Cam Reddish. If I could put Cam Reddish on here, they're both unbelievable, in my opinion. So he's similar to that. They got the same release, and so some days I love Cam Reddish. Some days Cam Reddish is the top three small forward in the game too. Other days I want to quick. For me, him. PG like, and Cam are one and two. Could be quick sold. I would have. I would have quick sold by now. He is that inconsistent for me. So some days I love him in green. Everything. Some days I just can't green anything. With I love Cam Reddish. I love Cam Reddish. Paul George that much because I've never really had him on my account because uh, he does cost a little bit more and I already have Cam Reddish. I don't use him that much, but it's the same exact release. So and, and Paul George has always been inconsistent in past games for me. So I already know Paul George would be super super inconsistent for me if I used the card more. Next one is Pink Diamond KD, similar to to every KD card in the history of 2K. Straight arm King Kevin Durant. That is who he is, what he is, and what he does give you i mean I current gen maybe but he is so so inconsistent last player is rudy gobert same thing kind of the chicken man sim some days i love rudy's release and then other days i just can't agree with i don't know i don't, don't even agree with any of these three once rudy sold me one time he was off my team forever but as far as mr Con inconsistent as long as kevin durant is on my list he is, is kevin Gar was kevin garnett this season no he wasn't he was last season. i was about to say if kevin garnett was this season he deserved that next one that is award. the best evo which do we even get any evos this no we season? didn't so i can't really talk about AP between three guys. it's kobe as much as i love ak much I love D-Rose. It's Kobe. Guys, and I, I love each and every one of these guys. We do get Pink Diamond, Derrick Rose. The best auctionable point guard in the game. I know I love John Stockton. I know I love uh, Ron John Stockton. Walt Frazier. But the thing is, when you're comparing John Stockton to Derrick Rose. That's bold. Rose. Even with Hall of Fame range and I love Walter. It's hard to say Stockton is better than Derrick Rose. Like, my Stockton has seven Hall of Famers. But still, badge of Derrick Rose is just so, so elite. Love is behind the back. I love everything he gives me. And so, he is the best actionable point guard. Then we move to Diamond AK-47. Another player. AK is unbelievable. Up. When I say that on the defensive end, I hate playing against AK. He's unbelievable. He is unbelievable. Base 98. Base 98. Has one of the smoothest releases in the game. If you're looking for a playmaker, AK is not your guy. But a 3 and D card, there's no better one. So than good. Diamond AK-47. And then a card that... If we had 2K-19... Oh, uh, like, no position locks. AK would be everybody's point guard again. Just like in 19, when he was everyone's point guard, he would be everyone's so, point guard again. Pink Diamond, Kobe Bryant. In my opinion, is Kobe Bryant a card that should play on the best teams in the game? Yes, he should. Yeah, Kobe's should one of the best two guys in the game. MT? No chance. There's just no chance. He's incredible, but the rate at which he's... I mean, he's just better Eddie Jones. Up that Kobe card. But when, when we are talking about the actual MVP, how can you not say Kobe? Like, how can you not? He is the he's, best card available on the auction. Yeah, he's ridiculous. He's, he's ridiculous. You guys, you guys play with Kobe enough. You will realize on the offense and defensive end. Not that much better than Eddie Jones, though. The non auctionable MVP is a very tough award this year. So oh, I am... Um, I am going to be biased and say Weber. I know Ty loves Showtime and he's going to say Dwayne Wade. But for me, badged up Weber is next level. I think badged up Weber is like a more fluid moving point center version. Like he's a half, basically a half dimer Blake Griffin with a better release. Like I'm, I'm sorry, I'm taking Weber. I know for a fact Ty is going to say Wade and he's not wrong saying Wade. But for me, Weber might be the best card in the game on current gen. Now, in my opinion, it's not as tough for me as he moves so well. Play style, personally. First card we're gonna talk about is Chris Webber. Now, the it's just not Wilt. Chris Webber, Will Chamberlain. It's Will just Webber. not Wilt. In between those guys, I'll leave that up to you because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna get on, on something that I don't know enough about because I don't have either of these guys on my it's team. Webber. So it's Webber. Sure, he's Webber. Much of a competitive type setting, but Chris Webber gives you the Blake Griffin type of feel. And he's different than Blake Griffin, but he gives you that. He's, type he's of more he's mobile. He's more he's mobile. Not. He's a better ball handler. He's not as good. He's not as big a body. He's not as good a rebounder, and he doesn't get contact dunks like Blake Griffin. But man, if you want a point center. Weber and it's not is the best. It's not even now, close. Jump shots, really and I use point centers. Super easy to time. Does have steady shooter and only gold showtime. Uh, but but same thing with Will. Will doesn't have Hall of Fame showtime either. He's obviously the best defensive player in the game, but can't shoot uh, really. Will's like two K nineteen. Will gives you that inside center type of feel. And so he's a polar opposite of Chris Weber. And then we got a point guard in Dwayne Wade, or shooting guard, point guard. I play my point guard. And who is the season reward? I'm pretty sure every non actual MVP so far. In a comp setting, maybe Wade because of half showtime. It's no different. Dwayne Wade is my non actual MVP because if, if I'm talking about a player that I think is going to play in two fifty K, it is this. Galaxy Opal, the way That's a Next up, we do have the all Ruby team, in which honestly, one through three, they're all shooting guards. It's hard for me to exclude any one of these guys. I mean, I like these guys. There's no Nick Anderson in sight, which means he must have been last season. But actually, Nick Anderson was like in the middle of last season. He was he was so was so long ago. These guys all do the exact same thing. Like they literally all just hit wide open jumpers and play defense. Um, Shump is like a six six point or six five six six point guard. Then Jonathan Isaac, no question. Thon Maker has been... Maybe if you want to argue Larry Markkinen. I think... If we're talking next gen, I'm taking Thon. If we're talking current gen, I'm taking Larry Markkinen over him. Because I really like... I don't know why I really like that Larry Markkinen. But, yeah, I'm not going to disagree with this That's list. That's why I put him all in here. Offensively, good luck with this all Ruby team outside of Thon Maker. Because you just got to love defense if you're going to run this squad. But Iman Shepard, pretty sure was a weekend reward if you completed all the weekends. You'd have to, you have to use Jonathan Isaac as your point guard with this squad. You, I would not ever recommend like you literally have to use Jonathan Isaac and boost. That's the only way you're getting any scores. 
just that 3 and D type player feel, similar to a Matisse Stiebel, who's also very, very cheap. Those two go hand in hand. Honestly, all three of those guys. Kyle and Harris are the same character. Ruby Jonathan Isaac. Could have been on, on the, made his case for the most underrated budget MVP. He is that good. I just think he's a little worse Pasco Siakam, to be completely honest with you. I prefer I definitely get the Isaac, but it's close. He's quick, has very good length at 6'11", and it's just a great plug and play option in any type of setting. Then in the center position, we got a guy who is a lot better on next gen than current gen in Ruby Thon Maker. Yeah, Thon next gen's a god. Thon's a god next gen. Like the if you play with Giannis on next gen, you know. His movement is ridiculous next gen. He moves so well. Mirasan speed running up and down the court at the start of 2K20. So just kind of the feel that they give me, but no doubt about it. Thon's ridiculous on next gen. On the defensive end, they would wreak havoc. Next up, we do have the All Amethyst team starting off with the. Yeah, CP3, obviously. Drew Holly. I mean, I'm not sure if I take Wallace over X Man. I'm really not sure if I take that, but I agree with these two. It's, a, it's hard for me not to put on Mo Williams because of how much I like Mo Williams on next gen. But we're talking current gen. It is not even a close one here. Siakam, he belongs without question. Um, uh, do you know who I think belongs in here? Uh, maybe the team's a little bit small, but badged up Del Curry. Badged up... No, no, no. Sorry, 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 sorry. If you have a quick first step, gold clamps, gold quick first step, Tyler Hero. Get him into this team. Obviously, off rip, he's not as good as a Jarrod Wallace or an X-Man, but a badge of Tyler Hero belongs. Most underrated player, the budget MVP, Chris Paul. Next gen wise, absolutely incredible. Kind of a budget step. Curry. Current gen but Drew's is ridiculous. Drew's, Drew's so good. Still like Drew's so current good. Gen, I still, you know, he's going to be able to speak with He's still going to be able to get it done. The only thing is, he just doesn't have showtime. That's really the only thing on current gen. That just, I'm not, I don't, that's why I don't love the card uh, in a sense. Then we got Drew Holiday. Now, Drew Chris Holiday Paul doesn't have showtime. He's a 25 dunk. He can't dunk anyway. Is so elite. Even unbashed. If I had a most overlooked player, that would be... Drew so would be good. I, don't, I wouldn't say he's underrated. I would he's, just say he's overlooked. He's no, Drew is... If we're talking underrated, everyone knows about Chris Paul. I've never played against Drew Holiday once. If you're talking the most underrated, yeah, Drew Holiday might be the most underrated card in the game. Because nobody uses the guy. I'm like, I might make my top 10 most underrated players in 2K again. Because I made one of them for last season. Well, not for last season. I made one about him six weeks ago. I might have to make another one. Because Drew Holiday belongs. Drew Holiday belongs in that conversation. Drew Holiday don't understand how good he is. As a Zion current gen type release. He's so good. Let me tell you, he beats so good. Cards up. Then at the small four position, we do got Jared Wallace now. I did want to get Xavier McDaniel on this team, but I just couldn't. I think a fully biased out hero not, not works best. So that's why I did give the nod to Jared Wallace at the small four position. Another 3D player. And then you got Pascal Siakam. One of, you got Siakam and Sean Kim. I've already spent a, a while talking about these two, but... They're both brilliant. They're both brilliant. They be holding it down on my no money spent account. Then we're on to the all diamond team, in which we got Jamal Murray, Eddie Jones, Scotty Pippen, AD. I mean, it's hard to argue that the all pink diamond team is going to be better than this. I'm just saying. Like, I get it. You got Kobe at the two, but Kobe's just like a slightly upgrade version of Eddie Jones. Badge out Pip and Badge out AK is literally the best 3 4 combo in defense in the game. Arguably the best 3 4 combo in general in the game. Um, nah, actually, PG's better. Bosch is ridiculous, better than any pink diamond center. Um, Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray, Curry slide. If you know what you're doing with him, he's ridiculous. He's like a dunking version of D'Angelo Russell. But, um, yeah, like, it's hard to see the best pink diamond team being better than this. Now, starting with Jamal Murray, I wouldn't say the diamond point guard uh, position in season three. Jamal's bad. really good. Jamal Murray badged up. Jamal's really good. I love the card. I will, I will be the first to say that I haven't ever used the card in a competitive type setting. Jamal's but really Jamal good. Murray's, and he is just fine. Eddie Jones is the card I have used in competitive Eddie's type Eddie's so good. He's on my team to this day. Do I think he's a top five small or shooting guard in the game? Probably not. Before his budget, before him being a diamond, is very, very good. Got a badge of Scotty, though. Scottie Pippen, a card a lot of people using He's like, no shoot. Team. You need to give him shooting badges. That's a problem. Very, very solid. A lot of people want to compare him to Grant Hill. And just that he is drawing that comparison means that he deserves a spot on my old diamond team. Next up, we do got Diamond AK, in my opinion. So yeah, good. Best defenders the best diamond in the game. As as it's not even close. Mo, he's so versatile. If you're looking for a three and D guy or your squad, if a small forward or power. Not even close. He's the best diamond in the game. He is absolutely incredible. One of my. A Bosch is ridiculous. He goes well. Got diamond Chris Bosch, card that I personally have used in competitive type settings. So whether you're using him for a competitive type setting, using him on next gen just to have fun, diamond Chris Bosch is a great option as a stretch big. Then we do got the last thing to, for today: the all pink diamond. You know what? I take it back. The all pink diamond team is better. I take it back. Diamond team starting with the backcourt of Derrick Rose and Kobe Bryant, the two best auctionable guards in the game. Starting with Derrick Rose, comes with 10 base Hall of Fame badges. You give him range extender. I personally like his release, has Hall of Fame showtime, gets showtime dunks, unlike Baron. Davis. I'm not the biggest fan of D Rose, but he's the best pink diamond. Then we got Kobe Bryant, beats people up on the defense. Finish. Actually, Derrick Rose versus Wall Frazier. I think I have more success. Actually, no, I'll say I'll give you Derrick Rose over Frazier. I do think Baron's better in both, though. 
a very complete player. A lot of people don't love his release, and I don't love it. It's, it's good, but I don't love it. It's not next year. It's not base 98, but still is absolutely elite. Then we get on to the small four position, which I got Pink Diamond, Paul George. A great 3 and D option. Kobe's is the, Kobe might be the best release on next gen, though. I love those. Things. PG and Kobe might be two of like top five release on next gen. Types of players. Now, he is inconsistent. I do want to clarify that, but look no forward further than Pink Diamond, Paul George, and AK. Is, it's kind of those 3 and D options to plug in play. Then we get Pink Diamond, Larry Bird. A lot of people next gen, he's might be the best card in the game. Paul George. On next gen, I wouldn't disagree with you because of the Hall of Fame range. Might be the best card in the game. That is. He's a very, very fun card to use. I just don't think competitively he's that next level, in my personal opinion. Then at the center position, I feel bad for the people who weren't able to get Wayne Embry. I'm so thankful me. that 2K bless you. Me. Me. I'm one of them. Absolutely. I only had to win, I say only, like 70 triple threat offline games. I'm like 80 in. No, no. Games and weren't able to get him. So thankfully, 2K bless you. I know someone who got. I absolutely. I know De X Dale who played on my like FIBA team. He got like seven of them. He got like seven Wayne Embrys. So yeah, that is pretty much it. Overall, pretty decent video. I agree. We agreed in the cheesiest. Somewhat agreed on defensive player of the season. I prefer AK for perimeter, but I'm not gonna complain. Overrated. I mean, I think it's Embiid and it's not close. Underrated. I mean, our definition of underrated might be different. Of these three guys, in terms of pure value-wise, CP3 definitely the best. But I would definitely say even a Drew Holiday is more underrated than the three of these guys. Token Ward, obvious one. Budget MVP, CP3, I agree with that. Mr. Inconsistent, I like all three of these cards, so it's hard for me to say he's wrong on it. Auctionable MVP, Kobe, not going to disagree. Um, non auction MVP, in my opinion, it's Weber. He's going to say Wade. That's perfectly fine. And then in these teams right here, there are very, very few changes. So anyway, yeah. And it's pretty much it, lads. So a link to Ty's uh, channel will be in the description. Go subscribe to him. And this is his um, overall awards for season three. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.